and welcome to our third lesson on probability. So today's lesson we're going to look at probability from sample space diagrams. But to help you get warmed up, here's a fun problem on permutations with money. So there are seven ways of making eight pence with coins and we're looking at a five pence, a two pence and a one pence coin. The challenge is to complete the table to show these seven ways. If you want to pause the video and try it and unpause it when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to go through this quite logically in that I'm going to have no five pences, no two pences, which means I need eight one pences. The next logical step would be no five pences, one two pence, but then I need six pennies. No five pences, two two pences, which is four pence, and four pennies. And you can see the pattern now. Zero, three, which is six pence, two pennies. Zero, five pences, four two pences, which is the eight penny, so I need no pennies. Or one five pence, no two pences, and three pennies. Finally, one five pence, one two pence, and one penny. I'll make eight pence. I hope you got that. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's move on with the main part of the lesson. So like I said, we're going to generate sample space diagrams and use them to calculate probabilities. So a sample space diagram is this two-way table and it's a really nice way of organizing all the possible events you can have when you spin a spinner and when you toss a coin. If we use this table correctly, you'll see there'll be no repeated outcome and no missed outcome. So you can have an head and a one, a head and a two, so that's a head and a coin, two on a spinner, and you can see we're going to exhaust all the possible outcomes that begin with the head on the coin. And we can do this, this the same for the tail, a tail and a one, a tail and a two, a tail and a three, a tail and a four. So you can see there's no repeated outcome and there's no outcomes which are missing. So this is really logical. This is the key word, logical, and it is systematic. These are key words associated to today's lesson. Find the probability of scoring a four and a head. Well, we know from our two-way table that there are eight possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And of the eight outcomes, only one of them is a head and a four. So that would be one eighth. The probability of an even number and a tails well, it has to be from the tails, and only two of them are even, a two and a four. So this would be two eighths. But you would simplify that fraction and divide both by two. So the probability of getting an even on the tails is one quarter. The question C, the probability of getting a number less than three and a head. So now we're only looking at the heads. There are still eight possible outcomes and less than a three, which means it has to be a one or a two. It cannot be a three because that is equal to three. So again, two out of eight, which we know simplifies to make one quarter. And the last one, the question E. So a prime number and a tails. So let's just remind ourselves of some prime numbers. So our prime number has two factors, so that is only a two and a three. A common misconception is to think that one is a prime, it isn't, it's only got one factor itself. So a prime number and a tails. Well, two and a tails and a three and a tails, which again is two eights, which we know is one quarter. So do you want to try this question? Two fair spinners are spun. The numbers are multiplied together to get a score. Complete the simple space diagram to show all the possible outcomes. 
if you want to pause the video and resume it when you're ready. So we'll call this spinner 1 and this spinner 2. So on spinner 1 you can get a 2, a 3, a 4 and a 5. On spinner 2 you can get a 6, a 7 and an 8. And the numbers are multiplied together. So you'll get a 2 times a 6 which is 12. A 3 times a 6 which is 18. 4 times a 6 which is 24. 5 times a 6 which is 30. So if that gives you the help you need to complete the rest, you can pause the video and try and complete the other two rows yourself and resume it when you're ready. Okay, on the, the second row you can get a 2 and a 7 which is a 14, a 3 and a 7 which is 21, a 4 and a 7 which is 28, and a 5 and a 7 which is 35. And if you get a 2 on spinner 1 and an 8 on spinner 2, that's a 16. A 3 and an 8 would be 24. A 4 and an 8 would be 32. And a 5 and an 8 would be 40. So if you want to already, if you want to pause the video and find the probability of scoring a 30 and a 24. To score a 30, well, the total outcomes is 12. So out of 12, one of them is the number 30. So that would be 1 twelfth. To score a 24, we have 1 and 2 outcomes out of 12. And they simplify to make 1 6. And for part 3, the probability of scoring a number between 20 and 42. Well, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 which is 8 out of 12 and this will simplify by dividing both by 4 so we have 2 thirds and for part 4 the probability of an even number well if it's multiplied by 2 it will be even so all of these if it's multiplied by 4, it will be even, so it's all of them. If it's multiplied by 6, it will be even, so it's these two as well. And if it's multiplied by 8, it will be even, because these are all even numbers. So this is 10 out of 12, which simplifies to make 5, 6. Can you explain why it is impossible to score a square number? Okay, it is impossible because no number is repeated on the square of a circular spinner. And because no number is repeated, you're not times a number by itself. And by definition, a square number is a number multiplied by itself. So this is the challenge question. Stephen and Claire each have four cards. They each take any one of their own cards. They then multiply together the numbers on the two cards. Some of their outcomes are recorded in this partially completed sample space diagram. What is the probability of a product of two cards being a multiple of five? Okay, do you want to pause the video and try and work out from, these, from this information here what cards they have? When you can work out what cards they have, try and complete the sample space diagram and use this to work out the probability of getting a multiple of five. And you can resume the video when you're ready. Okay, so the first clue is that three and 11 are both prime numbers, which means this number has to be three and this number has to be one. Likewise, this number has to be 11. So now we know these numbers, we, we also know that 28 and 35 share a common factor of 7 and 7 times 4 makes for 28 7 times 5 makes 35 and we know 3 times 10 would make 30 and 10 times 5 would make 
15. So we've left your information. If you couldn't finish it before, do you want to try and finish it now and resume it when you're ready? So we have 1 times 5, which is 5, 1 times 7, which is 7, 3 times 4, which is 12, then we have 5 times 4, which is 20, 11 times 4, which is 44, 3 times 5, which is 15, 5 times 5, which is 25, 5 times 11, which is 55, 7 times 10, which is 70, and 10 times 11, which is 110. What is the probability of a product of a two count being a multiple of five? If you couldn't complete the simple space diagram, do you want to pause it now and try and answer this question? Well, the total number of outcomes, there are four here and four here. So there are 16 possible outcomes. The multiples of five, well, if it's multiplied by five, it must be a multiple of five. So we have lanes. And it must be these for the same reason. And if it's a multiple of 10, it must also be a multiple of 5, because 10 in itself is a multiple of 5. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, which is 10 out of 16, which simplifies to make 5 eighths. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. The next lesson will be on probability and Venn diagrams. Thanks again and take care.